Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Crusty Couch. For whatever reason, it looks like some portions of the audio were lost, but it looks like it only affected the beginning of this episode. Basically, what you missed out on was a very hilarious joke by Paul. I mean, what else is new? You missed out on part of the introduction of what we're making the episode about, and we missed out on Paul's number 10 choice for his favorite games list of all time. Um, But that's about it. The criteria is still there and the rest of the episode is still there. So just excuse this and we'll try to be better about salvaging our audio in the future. Thanks again for listening and I hope you enjoy the episode. For this week's episode, we're doing what we feel are the top 10 like best games or our top 10 favorite games of all time. Um, To begin, we've compiled a list based with three criteria. And that criteria is the amount of playtime you have in it, like how often you can play it, the wow factor of when you first played it, and how replayable it is. Now, just because these three factors are in it doesn't mean you have to follow all three super strictly. Like you could have a game on this list that has a wow factor and a ton of replayability, but you don't have a lot of playtime in it right now. Kind of thing. Like as long as you can present a pretty good argument... then, you know, you can put it on the list. CSGO at number 10. My number 10 mm-hmm. is Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Um, Ooh. What I consider to be the absolute peak of Pokemon in terms of quality. Uh-huh. Um, it's the first time where I felt like... <coughs> Nintendo, or specifically Game Freak, does this really annoying thing where they tie features to games. Where they say, like, right. oh, no, the feature of Pokemon Emerald is the Pokemon contests. So we can't put it in the next oh. games because it makes Pokemon Emerald less unique. Oh, really? They do that? So yes, like the they game have a philosophy. Can, so, like, the game where you can, like, sit down, you can't do that in the other games? Well, it's bench sitting, yeah, that's a thing. But, like, uh. <laughs> I, I mean, like, big main features. Right. And it's super frustrating. And Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver was the first time where they didn't have that weird restriction. Like, Mm -hmm. there was, like, the Battle Frontier, there was Pokemon contests, there was, like, a bunch of activities for you to do. And it had the best late game of any Pokemon game, because there was an entire other region for you to explore. Yeah. There was a whole other eight badges for you to earn. You know, like, it's just, like, the ultimate Pokemon game. I still go back and replay it every once in a while, and um, it's probably the game I have the most playtime in. Uh, in the of the Pokemon series, yeah, like the Wow factor was like the updated graphics, the updated engine, the updated mm-hmm. music, which is fucking great, mm-hmm. <laughs> and just it's like, like Skrillex and shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just they just replaced everything with dubstep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, to me, it's the ultimate example of what Pokemon, the Pokemon company company is capable of making. And they haven't come anywhere close to that since. That's so weird that they have that kind of model. I mean, it kind of makes sense. But at the same time, it's like not enough features to yeah. like omit. Why are they? Why did they do that? Uh, like, bec- because they're lazy. <laughs> it, it's so weird, though. Because yeah. they are... I don't know. I've always thought of Pokemon being weird. Like, I understand that one's your favorite. But I've always been like... To me, they've always been kind of um, similar... So yeah, I just never really kept up because, like, I don't know. It's it's literally they're just updates, honestly. Yeah, they're like big patches, you know. Yep, pretty much. Like, if there was one solid, like, if they made one main game, they would just yeah. add all the stuff in an update. Like, if it was an MMO or something, but they just yeah. sell it as two different games yeah. <laughs> every year. So that, that's why I thought like Sword was gonna be that. Yeah, like, when I saw it, I was like, oh, they're just gonna probably stick with that and update it over time and stuff like that but but yeah i haven't really been i haven't really kept up with the pokemon series ever since like fucking like black and white but Mm -hmm. um heart gold and soul silver is where it peaked for me but yeah that's my number 10 okay very cool very cool very nice what would you say the personal impact was again personal impact was gold and silver were the first pokemon games i was introduced to as a kid Oh. Um, I didn't play Red and Blue because those came out when I was born. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And so I remember my dad, he got me Pokemon Gold for my birthday one year, and I was just, like, obsessed with Pokemon after that. Nice. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, my number nine, 
uh, vastly different. Similar concept, I guess. They're both open world. It's uh, GTA San Andreas. Ooh, okay. <laughs> That's my number nine. All right. Uh, I I don't know how much time I have in this. <laughs> A lot. Yeah. But um, I'll say that, like, if you're going to do a campaign run, it's going to be, like, at least your first time around, it's, like, 60 hours. Yep. It's a pretty long game. It's a pretty long game. And if you choose to do all the side stuff, then, then you know, it stacks on top. But Yeah. Um, it's it's just one of those games that is, like, a classic from the get-go. Like, people mm-hmm. still talk about San Andreas to this day. Yeah. And I'm, I'm one of them, you know? Yeah. And I actually had a really hard time with this because I was like, oh, I really want to put a GTA game in there. But somewhere. I didn't know. Yeah, I, I was like, I, I want to put it somewhere in my top ten because uh, I just grew up with GTA, and I I was thinking between like San Andreas, four, and five, but no, I was thinking more like Vice City actually. But, Vice City is really <clears throat> damn good. Yeah, but I I stuck with uh, with San Andreas because I just remember doing a bunch of random shit all the time. Yeah, like, there's a huge replayability factor for me where it's just like you can go in and just do stupid shit and turn on your cheats and all that <laughs> crap. And that's what I did. Like I would yeah. I would go in and then do I had a sheet of paper with the cheats on it. Like I would yeah. write down all the cheats from game facts and then I'd sit down with my be- my buddies and be like, Look, I got another gun. I got another gun. <laughs> this one's the mini gun. Yeah. And then yeah. and uh, we would just like see we would take turns on like how long you can survive the cops and all that stuff and and oh, it was just oh man yeah i used to so love fun. that i love so playing fun. that with my brother yeah and i would always like pimp out the cars and all that stuff give them hydraulics and all that stuff it was so much fun and yeah. i just have a lot of good memories with that game and it was just compared to the other ones it was the one that i like spent a lot of time and like i played the shit out of four yeah and four was a different vibe because of the like the the physics and stuff so like it was fun crashing in that in, like, GTA 4, but it wasn't, like, San Andreas, or it's, like, mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, just a bunch of stupid... Like, it even had two players! Do you remember that? It, it did have, like, a co-op mode, right? Yeah, it had a little co-op <laughs> mode. You can go to, like, the, the town, and then you go in, and, and then you can plug in a second controller, and someone can play a, a second character with you. Yeah, I remember that. And I remember this was, like, one of the first games that had, like progression where it was like if you ate food cj would oh fat. yeah like, dude i thought that was so cool too yeah you, mind-blowing you, to me yeah it was so cool because you can go to the gym and and you can just keep working out until you're buff yeah or you can change your hair you can get tattoos you can get fat skinny like it was just those little those little details at the time were mind-blowing i was just like wow holy crap that's cool <laughs> and then, i remember too like the stats like yeah the that stats was one of the was first cool. games i played that had like stats where like you didn't just level them up you had to like do yep. the things in order for them to level up mm-hmm. you had to like and swim I, and run and all that yeah i remember thinking Vikings. that was so cool yeah. oh yeah yeah you're right you unlocked a secret memory i forgot you can upgrade your like gun skills and yep. stuff yep oh it wasn't it one of like the only gta's too where you can like shoot the tank and it blows up yeah yeah it yeah, that shoot was, the gas tank. Yeah, yeah, you shoot the dude. San Andreas is so fucking cool. <laughs> I, oh man, it was such a good game. So, yeah, and it, it deserves to be as uh, on my list at least. It like, still holds up too. Still holds up. You it can go back. Uh, I don't know about the remake, but I know the original still holds up. People play it still. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, personal impact was like it just kind of showed me that like you can make a serious type game. But you can also make it really fun. Yeah. And also, like, goofy, too. Like, mm-hmm. the cheat codes in that game are so ridiculous. And, yeah. like, the fact that there's an urban legend around this game with the fucking Bigfoot. Oh, you know, dude, like, all the myths and stuff. So yeah. fucking cool. Like, this game has lore, like, outside of the main story yeah. of, like, the world. <laughs> There'd be, like, videos of people going into, the, like, Mount Chiliad and be like, oh, dude. if you stand here, yes. you'll see Bigfoot. Yes. And stuff like that. Like, I remember that. It's so shooter. dumb. And then you can see people sneaking into Area 51, all that stuff, with yeah. the jetpack and all that crap. Yeah, San Andreas was just another... It was a, it was a hit, man. I, I yes. don't know. It's some, some vibe. I, I I can't tell. Yeah. You just gotta play it if you never played it before, you know? If you haven't played really it, what game. the fuck are you doing, man? 
Yeah, yeah. Definitely the best Classic. GTA still. I, I still think it's the best GTA. 4 <laughs> was great, but they removed the stat system and all that. Yeah. The and then you got five was really good though. You got yeah, but then after that, uh, like I don't know, I didn't I didn't really play GTA Five as much. Uh, GTA Online, I don't really, I I don't know, I, I didn't don't, really I don't count care it. For that yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, on I don't know. I think okay. San Andreas held up on its own besides the other ones. Like I don't know. If you had to choose between the three, like which one would you play? You know. Yeah, I would put. I would probably pick San Andreas. Like, I have yeah. so many memories as a kid of like, just not even doing the story or anything, but just driving around and like, following the traffic laws or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> just, Dude, there's just so much good stuff in San Andreas, and yeah. like, all, a bunch of memes came from San Andreas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, just overall, it's a really classic. Good. Yep, yeah. classic. All right, my number nine is Diablo Two. Uh, oh, of destruction, cool, the whole the whole deal, yeah. Okay. Um, I played the shit out of Diablo 2. Like it was probably one of the first ever like games I ever played as a kid. Um mm-hmm. my oldest brother introduced it to me at his house and we did a LAN party like it was me and my two other brothers and we just played it for hours and hours and hours and I was just I was just hooked. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember going to Walmart the next day and buying the battle chest for like $20 and okay. installing it on my shitty computer. And like, I remember like, it's weird to think that a, a game like Diablo 2 couldn't run on hardware at the time. <laughs> like, yeah, but my computer couldn't handle it. Um, but I still try to play it and I played it for years. And, you know, I think that the remake is fucking incredible like the lag on online is awful and you can't really play the game online but like offline it's just like a faithful recreation of one of my favorite games so it's just like revitalized my love for it (laughs) in recent times but yeah the remake was actually pretty good yeah it's just to me it's just a classic example of how to do action rpgs and how to do them Mm -hmm. exceptionally well Mm -hmm. um i've tried games like poe and games like wilson and fucking last epoch or whatever but they just don't scratch the same itch for me as diablo okay. 2 okay um, it's one of those games where i'm like i'm gonna do a couple but ba- i'm gonna do a couple bail runs today you know <laughs> it's just yeah, like yeah. i still play it randomly that's cool um, did, yeah. did people think you were satanic for playing it it's fu- i have a funny story about that my my mom um for my birthday i wanted her to buy me diablo 3 but like how do you convince a very Catholic Mexican mother to buy you a game literally <laughs> called <laughs> Devil 3. <laughs> uh-huh. And um, she was not happy. She did not want to get it for me, especially because it was M-rated, too. Uh-huh. She's like, no, 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 this this game is going to turn you gay or whatever. <laughs> she, was just, <laughs> she was just very, like, I don't know, like, skeptical or nervous. And I said, like, uh-huh. no, mom, no, mom. You kill the demons in this one. Like, you're a, you're a good guy. You know, and I, I lied to her a little bit. Like, <laughs> you're you're working for God. You're like an angel. <laughs> you're killing, <laughs> you're killing all the demons. And she's like, okay, all right, fine. Like that's how that's I was like funny. Her. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. So what is, can you describe? What these land parties are? Are these like parties where you sacrifice goats or what? Yeah, basically you show up and you have to tell the person the password. And after the blood orgy, you basically um, cut the head off of a gamer. Uh-huh. And um, then oh. once the smell goes away, <laughs> then the sacrifice is complete. Oh, I'm thinking and, it. And that's how that's how copies of Diablo Two is made. Yeah, yeah, that's how Blizzard made all their copies. Oh. After they sexually harassed the women in the workplace. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I guess for those of you who don't who don't know what a LAN party is, is like you all have your same consoles in the same room. And you're connected via something called LAN, which is just like a direct connection. So there's no lag. Um, and you just play that way. And mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun. And a lot of games don't have that feature anymore. Yeah. Which makes me sad. So it's cool. <clears throat> but yeah, so Diablo 2 is a very special game, near and dear to my heart. It kind of killed me to put it at number nine. Um, but again, the numbers on this list aren't really like indicative about how i feel about them i guess yeah i was can really that's actually though. that's actually yeah that's actually a good point like uh, these are my favorite right now you know yeah 
That's a good point. That's a good. Point. All right. So what's your number eight? Okay, my number eight um is Risk of Rain two. Okay, I got I, one right. I got one right. I fucking love Risk of Rain two, dude. It's so fun. It's fucking great. It's an it's amazing game. Incredible. I'm so happy with Hopu. Like they they did a really good job because I played the first one. And the first one was fun, but it was like drastically different. It was like a two D side scroller type of thing. Kind of game, yeah. Yeah, and like in order to play with people, you had to make a land party and all that shit. And yep, it was just rough. But they came back and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna do a three D one, Risk of Rain two, rogue like, and it's literally just you sit down, you keep playing until you die. It's, it's just is, oh, so good, it's so fun. Yeah. It's so fun. And uh, yeah, so it's a pick up and drop." With matches, usual or I guess runs taking usually maybe like eh, I would say like ten to forty minutes. Yep, each. it can range. It could range or longer. I've had like two hour runs before. Yeah, it's if you just keep nuts. doing the loop. Yeah, you can keep looping. Oh. Um, but you could just build nutty nutty builds all the time, and that's what makes it so fun. So yeah, like, that's the thing. Like every time you play it, it's something different. Yeah, because most roguelikes, it's like, oh, you find something and you keep that and you're now you're strong and you just beat the game or whatever. But this one's like, oh, you can keep looping around and the, the stuff you find, which is like equipment or whatever, mm-hmm. you can lo- you can stack that equipment. Yes. And, th- and you there's no real like cap to your stats, so you can ju- <laughs> you can <laughs> just like fly you, like if you pick up enough like uh, uh, running items you. If you hit running, you just like start to fly and stuff I like that. Love that yeah. Or like, you know, attack speed, you can it's all uncapped. So it's just you can make these nutty, stupid builds and it's so fun. And, and uh Yeah. And just playing with friends is is also oh, a really good great. time. It's you so can play great. alone, but you with friends is just fucking fun too. And yes. l- lately I've been playing with mods. So I've been playing as like Goku and Vegeta, and Vegeta and shit. <laughs> it's so it's so fun. I cannot that too. I didn't even mention that yet. The mod community is crazy cuz mm-hmm. they're actually doing like like when I say Goku and stuff, like they're they're actual characters that people like designed and made a, and like created their animations so and their models. So they're not just skins, right? They're no, they're not just new skins. Characters. Yeah, they're like actual characters, like actual new characters. So That's I'm crazy. like really impressed. I'm like, holy crap. Like these guys actually love this game yeah. as much as I do, you know? Except they're talented. But <laughs> <laughs> That's besides the point. It's so, Yeah, it's it's really, really good. Like it's a, a great example of the roguelike genre, like at its very best. Yeah. Like, Whenever people dis- whenever people say like what are some of the best roguelikes ever made, Risk of Rain Two is always on that list. Yes, um, Risk of Rain Two is on top for me at least. There there are yeah. some good roguelikes out there, but this one is fairly fresh. Like it came yes. out. I mean, has it even released? I think it might still be in Earth. No, I think it did release. Yeah, it's 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 out of early access as of like like a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It just it just got out of early access. And yes. they, the early access itself has only been around like for a year or so, yeah. and it's it's that fresh and like people are already <laughs> claiming it's like probably the best roguelike yeah, or one of the best. It's really, really fucking good. It just yeah. narrowly missed out on my list. Um, oh. but I would have put it on. It was between this and another game. Okay. Um, but we'll get to that. But um, yeah, Risk Wait. of Rain Two is yep. really great. So good. So good. That's my number yeah. eight. All right. So my number eight is League of Legends. Um, I knew that would be on here. Before people unsubscribe and click away, please let me just... <laughs> 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 um, I was kind of hesitant about putting this game on the list in general, but it's a game that I've played... It's a game that I've put in at least one to four hours in a day for the past 10 years. <laughs> Jesus. I've been playing this game for 10 fucking years, so it must be doing something right. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know what me, they call people like you, Noah? Sad. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay, okay. keep going. Okay, um, yeah, I've put in thousands and thousands of hours into this game. I own a ton of skins, like... 
Um, it's something that I play with my friends and my brothers every single day. When I'm not playing it, I'm watching it. You know, I watch the LCS and like the global league esports scene. Um, for some reason, this game really just seems to click with me. It's the game that I've committed the most to learning. Um, and I don't know why. Like, the game is fun, but I wouldn't say that it stands out gameplay wise from anything else on my list. It's just something I can pick mm-hmm. up and play. It's like a comfort food. You okay. know what I mean? It's, it's like probably, McDonald's. Probably just because you've been doing it for so fucking long. Yeah, but I still have fun. It's not like I'm like just like addicted and just like not enjoying myself. <laughs> like I still have a good time playing the game. Uh, oh yeah, how often do you rage, huh, Senor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paul, Paul played with me during my dark times. Mm-hmm. I've definitely calmed down a ton since we played okay. with this game. I did used to be a huge rager, but that was like I was a teenager, a, horm- a hormonal teenager. Yeah, had well. no control over their emotions. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, Fair enough. But yeah, did like, Dad voip yet? No, fuck no. God damn it. Um, I think a big sticking point for this game, for people who are curious about it, is the community. Because it's not very good. In fact, it's pretty bad. Um, it's ne- never changes. So let, um, let Uncle Noah here give you some advice for if you want to start playing League of Legends. And I mean this completely unironically. Every time you get into a game, just type slash mute all. <laughs> and, then, and just do that until you hit like level 30 and then you're good <laughs> i promise you you will enjoy <laughs> the game more <laughs> um but yeah seri- in all seriousness league of legends is a really fun game for me i've put in tons and tons of hours into it so while i didn't want to put it on this list i kind of felt like i would be lying to myself if i didn't put it on the list <laughs> That's fair. I honestly would have put it on my list, but I haven't played it in like a long time. Yeah, it's been a couple years so, since you played it. Yeah, I actually fell off. So yeah, but I used to play this just as much as he did back in the yep. day. Those summers when we would just play like six or seven games a day. Remember that? Yeah, that's just nuts. Good lord. Yeah, and yeah. these games can go from like thirty to forty-five minutes to, I mean, over an hour. Yeah. So, you know, seven or eight it's games a big. day, that's like all day. <laughs> yeah, we were, it was a full time gig. It was a full time, yeah. We were still stuck in bronze. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, it's a great game. Nice, nice. Okay, well, now that everyone left, I'm just going to talk about <laughs> movies. <laughs> I just watched uh, The Witcher. <laughs> Uh, all right okay okay uh my number seven is spider-man ps4 Ooh, okay that's another game that just barely missed Uh, i yeah i wasn't going to put this one on my list but then i was like no i i really should because it's 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 a part of me (laughs) yeah, <laughs> I got. I I have to put it on because I'm a yeah. big Spider-Man fan, as everyone knows. I freaking love Spider-Man. You're probably the biggest Spider-Man fan I know. Yeah, and I freaking I know a love Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Um, so I was like, okay, I have to put it on there because yeah, you know, there's been a lot of Spider-Man games, but there hasn't been one to this extent quite yeah. yet. Yeah, to- and go ahead. Hmm? Go ahead. I was just going to say, like, in my opinion, there's not a debate. Like, people like to say, like, oh, maybe the Spider-Man 2 video game is better. I'm like, shut the fuck up. No. <laughs> like, no. no. Go for, Spider-Man yeah. PS4 is the best Spider-Man yeah. game, period. Yeah. If you go back to Spider-Man 2, it's so dated compared to Spider-Man yeah. PS4. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, so, playtime, there's about, like, 20-ish hours in the campaign, mm-hmm. which is not too too much, um, but if you decide to do, like, all the side stuff, like finding the markers and all that shit, mm-hmm. landmarks and then stuff, you can get around, like, 40-ish hours if you're trying to 100% the game. You yeah, know? you can. It's a pretty easy platinum, yeah. let's say, if you're playing. I, I got the platinum. Yeah. Uh, I 100%ed it and took, like, 30, 40 hours or so. Yeah. Um, wow factor for me, obviously, is it, this was, like, a brand new Spider-Man game that wasn't dog shit, so I was like, <laughs> whoa. Yeah. You know? Because for a, yeah, they broke the mold. They finally broke the mold. Because for yeah. a long time, for a long time, everyone just said, "Oh, Spider-Man uh, Two for the PS2 is the best Spider-Man." Yep. Yeah. 
for a long, long, long time. Even after like Beanox started making their Spider-Man games and stuff, yeah. and like most of them were pretty all right, but they they weren't like they weren't as good as Spider-Man too, right? Yeah. But then one day Insomniac says, "Oh, we're picking up the Web Slinger," and everyone's like, "Oh shit!" Like, aren't those the guys that did Ratchet and Clank and yeah. Infamous and all yeah. that? And so everyone's like, holy fuck, this is going to be crazy. Yeah. And then I was one of those people, too, because I was like, I played Infamous. So I'm like, dude, if they can do, like, the parkouring from Infamous, Infamous, like, I'm sure they can figure out Spider-Man. And they just know yeah. what they're doing, too. Yeah. Like, they just they, know how to make a well-crafted game. Yeah, and they know how to make a good game. So I was like, no fucking way. Like, this is going to, is this going to beat Spider-Man 2? and it did yes. it was just yes. fucking good it was so good the acting was good the game was good the yeah. swinging was good you know everything was, was good swinging was so clean and crisp man yeah the swinging was fantastic and uh, i didn't put miles morales on here i was actually thinking between the two mm-hmm. because i was like oh i don't know like i really like miles morales because they improved upon the gameplay yeah but I still think the story from Spider-Man PS4 is, like, miles better than Miles and Miles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah, so I was like, okay, I, I have to put Spider-Man PS4 on here. It also um, just, like, like this Spider-Man game is probably my favorite interpretation of Dr. Octopus. Like, I feel oh, yeah. like him as a villain was at his best. I, mean, I, I don't read the comics. So I only really have like the the cartoons and the uh-huh. Raimi movies, but um, but I do think that his motivation was just so like uh, nuanced, and he wasn't just like evil to be evil. He was just like a guy who got fucked over, and he's just really upset yeah. after years of getting fucked over. And like Peter's heartbreak and stuff is like it's so good. It's so yeah. well done. It is so good. Yeah. The ending's great too. Yes, the ending Very is good. really good. Yeah. Very damn good game. So I was like, okay, it, like uh, it's almost <laughs> the perfect Spider-Man game. I thought it was the the perfect Spider-Man game at the time. Mm-hmm. But uh now that like Miles Morales came up and I and like I saw all the the small improvements they did to the gameplay, like I'm super looking forward to Spider-Man 2. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who knows if there's like co-op in that game or something like that'd be dude, so dope dude like i'm i'm stoked but yeah. uh yeah i think this game is just like an almost perfect spider-man game yeah so. okay all right yes, sir all right so my number seven is m- m- minecraft minecraft um, <laughs> <laughs> um i feel like this game for anybody who knows me, it was like an obvious one yeah. <laughs> in my top ten. Um, that in League, <clears throat> but um, Minecraft is a game that I bought very, very early on in my life. I was probably like twelve when I bought this game. I bought it. It was my biggest flex in life, dude. I bought it in early alpha when it was five dollars, <laughs> um, and I still have. I still have that account. Um, <clears throat> but you could have sold that on the stock market, dude. <laughs> Stunks. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like I've played this game for hundreds and hundreds of hours. I don't play it as much these days, but I, it's still every once in a while, like once a year, I'll be like, I'm going to do a Minecraft run, you know, <laughs> just play mm-hmm. it for hours. Um, but it, I put it on this list mostly because of how important to me it was as when I was younger. Um, dude, I was so addicted to this game. I would go to school and draw out like bases <laughs> that I was going to build. Oh, that's cool. I didn't do yeah. that, but I yeah. just kind of built shit. Yeah, and I, I would plan shit out and be like, okay, like I'm going to build this trap for like a zombie or something. Like, yeah, oh yeah, dude, I, I really like planned it out and shit mm-hmm. <laughs> instead of paying attention in school. Um, but um, yeah, it's just a very special game to me. Um like I said, I don't play it a crazy amount these days, but it's a it's another comfort game to me. And the music is fucking incredible. I still listen to the mu- like all the music in this game to this day. <laughs> nice. Um, and it's just a very simple game. Like the survival aspect of it is so negligible in my opinion. Like it's not hardcore at all. It's like a very relaxing game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With a lot of shit to do in it. <laughs> Oh yeah, 
it's so, a ton. Yeah, Minecraft would be my number seven. Ah, oh, pretty crazy, pretty crazy, pretty crazy. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. My number six is Fallout New Vegas. Oh, okay. I love Fallout New Vegas. Yes, it's I do absolutely too. amazing. I do too. It's That's, absolutely amazing. Wait, it's okay. So, so I'm a, you had it at number six. Yeah. Okay, I also have it on my list. Oh, really? Yes. Yours but, is higher on my list. Why not that? Yeah, let's say that. Yeah. <laughs> but I, okay. I really, really love this game. But we'll, go ahead, you talk about it, Paul. All right. Well, I, I have it as number six. Um, mm-hmm. I've played the shit out of it. I have a lot of hours in it. Yeah. Uh, typically, a, a campaign can last you like upwards to forty hours or more. If you do the DLC, it's about like sixty. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, the wow factor for me was just kind of like, uh, hold it, on. it's hold, pause. Sorry. Hold on. I'm so sorry. Hold on. Sorry, Hello. Paul. It's okay. What's up? I just want to tell you. I love you too. Did you really want us just to pause just for that? I almost cried. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Sorry about that, Paul. I'm getting another drink. Sorry to make noise. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Like, Hi. Hi, Paul. Hello. Tell your lizard to pay rent. Uh, Paul says to tell Dahmer to pay rent. Um, Dahmer doesn't need a pay rent because she's beautiful. <laughs> t- t- tell Ren that Dahmer's a little slut. He's, uh, Paul said that Dahmer's a little slut. She is. <laughs> Ren said she is. Oh. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> let's let's continue on. Go ahead. Uh, so Fallout New Vegas, yes, it is my number six, just because mm-hmm. it's one of. Probably the best or one of the best RPG games that I've ever played. Mm-hmm. Um, you can <laughs> you can literally do anything in that game, just about. And uh, the, the <clears throat> I'm gonna blow your mind, Paul. Okay. Fallout New Vegas is my number one game. Oh, on this no list. way! You got it yes. as number one. It is my favorite game of all time. <laughs> Holy shit! Okay, yes. well we could talk about it together. I feel bad now because I have it as number six. <laughs> That's fine. You know we have different tastes. It's, I'm it's, so sorry. It's okay to be wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely adore this game. I don't, I, I don't have as much playtime in it as the others in my list, but. Mm-hmm. Like on the PS3, I probably have like 300 hours, and on PC, I think I have like 120. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, it's just an absolutely dude, incredible game, dude. It's such a good game without mods, but then once you yes. mod it too, it's fucking crazy. Yes. It's like insane. Yes, when it's the, like the, the mods just add a whole nother layer. Yeah, it's like Skyrim, but good. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> obsidian really went above and beyond with this game like they knew what the fuck they were making like they took the the turd that was fallout 3 and they refined it into something beautiful yeah Yeah. (laughs) um and the story in that game the dialogue the different ways you can approach certain missions is just all so masterfully done like yeah it's one of those games to me that's just like infinitely replayable because there's so many different outcomes to things yep um you can do pretty much anything in that game you could be whoever yes. you want there's yes. multiple paths in the game and, and uh just role playing that shit is so fun like you ever find an ncr code and you're like i'm the ncr yeah, yeah yeah but even in that game you have to be careful because if you come across certain territories wearing the ncr court coat yeah they will shoot you yeah yeah <laughs> They, so they, thought cool. of, they thought of everything in that game. Yes, and there's like there's very uh, what's the word nuanced ways to approach a lot of the missions in this game. Like you're given one thing that seems very direct, like go to this cave and clear out all the enemies in it. But once you mm-hmm. get there, you find that there's another mission there that's a lot more detailed, and you yeah. realize you find out if you really do want to wipe all these people out or yeah. not. Like. But you could absolutely just go there and not talk to anybody and just slaughter them if that's how you want to play. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, like that's just what's so incredible about this game. Like me and my partner, we play this game vastly differently. 
mm-hmm. um, they like to just fucking go melee into one intelligence and just murder everybody they can see. <laughs> Lol. And the game okay. allows you to do that. There's an yeah. ending for that. Yep. Um, but I like to play it a lot more standard. But the game as its as its own is a masterpiece, and the DLC is fan fucking tastic too, man. Hell yeah, dude. Some there's a lot of good shit in Fallout New Vegas. It's just a really damn good game. Yeah, except for Lonesome Road, that shit sucks. But everything well, else is really good. Yeah, and then there's also just like so many memes that came out in New Vegas too. So it's just yeah. like Fisto. So good, yeah, Fisto and <laughs> all this shit. Yeah, it's like it's so good, and and like it, they they pretty much came up uh, with just about everything. Like in case you decide to be like. A level ten luck or a level ten like yes. melee or level one intelligence like they come mm-hmm. up with a bunch of different like dialogue options and all that stuff and it's just yes. so funny. Like, did you know if you had ten luck and you go to the casino, you win every time, and if you play enough, they kick you out. They'll kick you out. Yep, they'll <laughs> yes. ban you. Yeah, they ban you. Yeah, <laughs> like that's so funny. <laughs> There's a Steam achievement to get banned from every casino. <laughs> really? Yeah. I didn't know that. But. There's just so many there's so many unique things about this game too. Like the main well, I guess for me he would be an antagonist, but for others he wouldn't be, but Caesar um, yeah. in that game. There are different there the way that NPCs pronounce his name depends on if they like him or not. So some call him Caesar and some call him Caesar. That's which I'm true. just like that's fucking that's an insane level of detail that you just don't see in other games. Yeah. And you actually bring up a good point. Some people would see him as like the antagonist, and some people like would side with him and stuff. Yep. Yep. But it's like it's just like a believable world where it's like it's split in two. Yeah. So it's like you don't know what to do because yeah, and because everyone's shitty. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's a fucking asshole, and that's just how the the world of New Vegas is. Like you yeah. just you 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 mark your own territory. So yeah. You just exactly. live the way you want to live. Yeah, oh, the game is so good. Like, I would say that unfortunately the gameplay hasn't aged very well, like the shooting uh, yeah. compared to games these days. But it's not awful. It's still yeah. p- pretty playable. Oh yeah, it's still definitely playable, and I'm sure there's mods that can spice it up a little more. It, exactly. But um, yeah. Well, Paul Paul gave my number one away, but I figured <laughs> I could I couldn't hold on to this for any for much longer. But um, yeah, Fallout New Vegas is a fucking masterpiece. Yes, absolutely, and uh, I just think it's pretty fun, cool that people still make mods for it. Yes, yes, it's still a very active game. It's still very active, people keep making shit for it, new content. For the love of God, Bethesda, please stop being salty that this game is better than everything you've ever made. Just release a 64-bit version, please! No, they won't, they're fucking lame. They're lame! Ugh. Make uh, wait. Microsoft owns both of them now, so just Microsoft make them do it. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Tim, but, Tim, uh, Tim, Microsoft. I know you listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we saw it. We saw it. <laughs> wait, we have saw one your little blip. who's on a yacht. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, New Vegas pretty much cemented my love for RPGs. It was yes. like the experience where I was just like, yes. Yeah. This is what I want. Okay. Like I, I, I've done so many runs of New Vegas. Like one as a cowboy, one as a like rogue hunter, dude, rogue. bounty hunter. Like I've I've sided with Caesar, gone with the NCR. I've done, or I've sided with Mister House. Like I've done all that. Yeah, but it's just yeah, it's so fun. It's and so the, good. No matter what side you choose, like the dialogue is just good all around too. Yes, the story is just super well constructed. Yeah. It's, uh, but, um, it's just really damn good. Super yeah. good game. Like, all right. One last thing. The the mm-hmm. the moment that this game blew my tits off was mm-hmm. I was my first playthrough. I was working with the NCR, and this is spoilers for the game, but um, I was working with the NCR, and I was tasked with protecting the president. Uh, there's there's a mission that you have during one of his speeches. I didn't know what to do because I was a dumb kid, and the president dies. Like you fucking sh- they shoot they blew his head off, and I thought I was just gonna get a mission failed and I would have to restart. Nope. Um, but just no, the game it. just continues. Like yeah, the president's dead now. Figure it out. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's just, just the world. 
Yeah, it was Go so through it fucking now. good. All oh, right. well. And then, yeah, it's just... <clears throat> I, I think the first thing I did in that game is I killed the the town you start in. Oh, uh, Sunny uh, something? Sun, Sun Sunnyville or something, I think. Yeah. Yeah, he's just... I just started killing everybody. And the old man's like, <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> I should have not brought you back. This is so funny. God, God damn it. I yeah. knew this would happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. but, okay, all right. So my number six is Cyberpunk 20... No, I'm just kidding. It's Red, it's Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, um, I, I had to put a Rockstar game on the list. I've played several of them and in my opinion there is no rockstar game that quite matches the quality of red dead 2 to me Mm -hmm. um i think that it's they've perfected their open world craft in every way and i said this before on on a previous episode i think it was the ign list where i legitimately believe that arthur morgan is one of the best characters in fiction yeah um you said that he really is an amazing example of why video games can be such an immersive art form. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, the ending is so fucking heartbreaking in this game, or his ending is so heartbreaking in this game. I was just like, fuck, man. <laughs> um, why did I do my boy like that, man? <laughs> but it was just a game that, like, I never really stop and smell the roses in video games. I just kind of, like, go to point A to point B and, like, just like to kind of go through things and i don't really stop or anything but with this game i just had to like slow down and appreciate the detail and like take everything nice and slow yeah it's it's fucking great at that um yeah you know but there's so many little details in that game it's crazy the story's really good the soundtrack is incredible like dude have you tried playing it in first person yes i love it really it's yeah. Like, yeah, it's like a whole other game. It's, it's a game insane. changer, yeah. Um, but I love, too, how, like, again, how nuanced everything is, too. Like, characters change their attitudes depending on, like, what you're wearing. Like, they'll, they yep. make comments to you, like, oh, you fucking stink if you haven't showered. Like, there's so many, like, little details about this game that I think is just so well done. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Like I said, like the story is good, the characters are all really good, and it's very well acted too. Like similar to what you were saying about Spider-Man PS4, uh, Red Dead Redemption Two is like a fantastic game in terms of performance. Because mm-hmm. um, normally it's very corny, but um, yes, yeah, they yeah. yeah they did a great job. There's a lot of good uh, dialogue and RDR too, and I like to talk like Dutch from time to time. <laughs> it's <Dutch>. fun. <laughs> Damn it, Dutch! I got a plan, Dutch. Yeah, and then there's just some really cool scenes, like the train, like the train scene and stuff like yeah. that. The mm. the scene that sticks out to me is rescuing um, John Marston's kid from the mansion. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so fucking good. It's such a memorable moment, and of course the final ride. But um, yeah, the final yeah. ride. But I yeah, Red Dead Two is great. Yeah, I bet you were a fan of uh, punching that feminist lady, weren't you? you fucking <laughs> That's fan. the first thing I did. <laughs> <laughs> After it, as soon as I got from the snow, I just I stole someone's horse and I rode over there. I was angry the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> feminist in my game? <laughs> Fuck no! <nah. laughs> when that when that one guy in the street was like screaming about like eugenics and like. Uh, DNA. <laughs> okay. I was like, I was like, that's right. <laughs> you know what I love doing? Uh, I go to the poker games mm-hmm. and I play them. Um, but and every time, if I lose, I just beat the shit out of the, <laughs> of the guy and take the money back. <laughs> you fucking asshole! Fucking How dare you make me lose? <laughs> hey, what? It's his problem. <laughs> it's, it's his. It's his fault for inviting you to the game. <laughs> yeah, his fault for winning. Yeah, but yeah, Red Dead Redemption Two is an amazing game. Um, my in my opinion, it's Rockstar's best. Um, that's why it's on my list at number six. Nice, nice. I bet you like slavery too, huh? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm referencing the uh, the amount of hours that they made their their devs work. Yeah, like. I wish that this game wasn't made under such abusive practices. But what are you gonna do? Yeah, it Actually, is I'll, what it is. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what you can do, but I'll get to that a little later. Oh, okay. 
Uh, let's see. My number five is Halo 3. Ooh, Halo, Halo 3. 3. Oh, what yeah. Classic multiplayer Dude, game. Dude, I... The, yes, that is pro- that is actually why I put it on this list. Um, simply because, like, yeah, the, the story itself is, isn't very long. It's, like, mm-hmm. eight-ish stories. But the multiplayer was fucking phenomenal. Like, I had an insane experience with their online service. Yes, yeah. Insane experience. Like, it was the most fun I've had playing online uh in a, you know probably ever like yeah. i had a i had a really damn good time playing online there like everything was always fun all the time people either people get salty or you find people who are cool and you play with them and doing like the the custom forge maps and stuff like that is so fun and i, I had a lot of good time with that game I, yeah. I used to play it like all the time as a kid uh unfortunately not too much like replayability you know it's as much replayability as a shooter can get the multiplayer uh, aspect, yeah, because the story yeah. you're one and done kind of thing. Right, like the only thing you can do with like the story is you can change the difficulty to legendary, which in a, in of itself is like a thing that people would do. Yeah. Because you would get like specific armor sets if yes. you did like difficulty. So if so that that was another th- thing of like the online experience. Like if you saw someone running around with like a flaming Hayabusa helmet and shit. You'd be like, wow, no fucking way. Yeah, like, like it, damn, they fucking earned that, you know? Yeah, like, like yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah. You know? And uh, so it, it, there was always just, like, these little things that I really enjoyed. And I, I played a lot of multiplayer, like, a lot. I bought the Xbox 360 uh, pass for it and all that stuff. And I used yeah. to play it. And my, even my brother used to play it a lot. Like, he, he bricked our Xbox because he played Halo 3 too much. <laughs> You got that red rank. That red rank. Oof, rip. Yeah. So, it, it's... It, a lot of it, I guess, is just, like, nostalgia for me. Halo has a big place in my heart. And yeah. the online experience was awesome. And I was sad to see it go. Especially, like, the ending of the story of Halo 3. It's like, you seal yourself away. And then you go... And then Master Chief just goes, like... Call me when you need me. Or yeah, whatever. and it's just like, oh, like I'm gonna miss you, Chief. I'm gonna miss you. And I didn't think I would ever see him again. And then he came back for Halo Four, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 All right, I guess. <laughs> oh, maybe he should have stayed locked away. <laughs> yeah, but it was just like it, it, it was a very like heartwarming, ex- like ending yeah, to the series. It was, a, and stuff. it was a good ending, and I I feel like kind of Bu- Bungie kind of advertised it as such. Yeah, as like, uh, hey, this is this is us kind of uh, ending up the the franchise because after that they made a Halo Reach, but I do remember yeah. playing the shit out of Halo Three too. Um, it wasn't my peak in terms of Halo games; it was Halo Two. But um, yeah, I just remember playing it a ton and just hanging out with my friends, and we would try to get like some of the cooler armor, like, and that was really the last hurrah of like unlockables in video games. I would say. Like, before everything started being tied to, like, DLC. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure, but I it was one of them where it's, yeah. like, you you when you saw those, like, pieces of armor, you knew, like, they worked for it. So Yes, yeah. It was just really cool. And, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I was thinking of Halo 2 as well, but I just wanted to choose one of the series. Yeah. Per, per series. Yeah. So Halo Three, I, I said okay, I'll do that one because I spent way more time with it. For sure, I did yeah. play the shit out of Halo Two, and I love Halo Two, but that one was more of like doing land parties and stuff. Yeah, which wasn't like super new to me because I've done that before. But this was like the first time I had a really like amazing online experience. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so. I, I get you. Yeah, so it was just like that kind of game, and it, it brought back a, a lot of nostalgia when I was like thinking about it. Oh, Aww. good game! Even though, <laughs> even though, like, even even the little like heartfelt message from the team at the end. Oh yeah, that was so sweet. Yeah, they're like, oh, thanks for sticking by <clears throat> us and all that stuff. Like, yeah, you know, this is the end and all that. And I was just like, damn, damn, <laughs> good games. And then, yeah. and then I, I and then I think the Reach one is even sadder because it's like. Uh, though I think Halo Three is still the better game, but Halo Reach had the that ending where uh, 
the dev team legit said like this is our final they, like thank Halo you game. yeah yeah thank you everyone and stuff and i like i remember reading that and i was just like oh shit like i felt <laughs> sad but good on them good on them. I, re- I remember there was an easter egg in halo reach where you could access like a special room that the developers made where they got to write a more detailed thank you to the fans oh uh, i think so yeah there Not- was something like that yeah, I think it's in the snow level or something. Yeah, I forgot where. But yeah, yeah, definitely. Like Halo Three was an incredible game. Um, that's crazy. I'm surprised you put it at top five, honestly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, <clears throat> my number five is RimWorld. Um, oh, that's I'm a, good a one. huge sucker for simulation, survival, like development games, like base building. <laughs> And there's no other game that does it quite like RimWorld. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, the way it's advertised is like it's a storytelling simulator. So <clears throat> in most games, you'll have like your own kind of destiny. But in this game, what's unique is you can choose between one. You can choose between four AI and they kind of tell the story for you. So like, mm-hmm. you know, it can decide oh, it's wintertime, or it can decide, hey, we're going to send some raiders towards you. Or, you know, it's randomized in that way, and there's different levels that you can choose. You can choose to have it be really chill and laid back, like events don't happen that often, or you can have it where it's completely fucking random. <laughs> like, yeah. total chaos mode. Um, and the game is fun, like, either way like the diversity that you can have in your builds like if you want to do like a scientific colony that focuses less on war and more on diplomacy you can do that if you want to be barbarians that fucking cannibalize their enemies like you could do that too like (laughs) it's insane the level of depth that this game has i have like a couple hundred hours in it like 120 i think which Mm -hmm. is not nearly as much as other people but um I still have not like beaten the game because there is an end game to it, but you know, you mm-hmm. never get to it. <laughs> um, um, but no way, the, the game kind of looks like ass. I mean, you're just playing sprites. Like, come on, man. <laughs> um, you know, if, if any, if there's any game that's a perfect example of visuals aren't everything, it's RimWorld. Because um, <laughs> yeah. I agree, it doesn't look great. You know, there's definitely much better looking colony sims out there, but there's nothing that's quite as deep as RimWorld. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. get it. That's a good yeah. game. That's yes. a good game. Yes. I love it very much. It has a nice like you were saying, it has amazing DLC and it has a very extensive and incredible modding community. Mm-hmm. So any mm-hmm. sim- any annoyances you might have with the UI is easily fixed. Nice. Alright. So uh, uh, number four. Okay. I uh, I actually just snuck this one in. Uh-huh. As we were talking, not not during that, but like earlier, I swapped it out for a different game. Um, <gasps> I know sacrilege, but I <laughs> I had to. I was like, okay, I have to put this on here because this is like one of my favorite series of all time. Yeah. So I was like, I have to do it. Um, at, at least at least for this year's uh, version of our favorite games, <laughs> and it's uh, Kingdom Hearts two. Ooh, okay. I had, I had to put it on here. Okay. I had to put it. I am That's, not very familiar with Kingdom Hearts, so you go crazy. I, I'm i not going to say it's like the greatest game of all time, but it has a big spot in my heart, in my car. So, yep, you know? I remember that, yeah. So it's like I have to put it on here because I played a lot of it. I did. Mm-hmm. And like each run is, or each campaign is like at least 60 hours or more. It's a full-fledged RPG, so it, it takes a long time. Especially if you're grinding shit up, it takes a long time. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I played this like crazy, and I loved it. It was pretty much the best Kingdom Hearts game of all time so far. Yeah. Even yeah. better than Kingdom Hearts 3. Like Kingdom Hearts 3 is great and all, but people still go back to the second one because the second one is just like, that much better. <laughs> yeah. Uh which sucks because uh, you know us Kingdom Hearts fans, we were waiting, <laughs> we were waiting <laughs> like thirteen years. years yeah. yeah, we were waiting like thirteen fucking years for 
Kingdom Hearts 3 and we're just like, oh, okay, like, this like, is okay. Oh, it's very all right. <laughs> yeah, like, this is okay, I guess. But Kingdom Hearts 2 is just like, woo! <laughs> yeah. Woo! So good. Yeah. Um, It's just, it. I feel like it's just one of those games where it's like, it's such a weird mix that it's, that it just like works. Yeah. Because it's, it's Disneyland and Final Fantasy put together. Such a strange combination. And it sounds stupid. Yeah, I know. It sounds fucking stupid, but like the uh the writer did a good job on it. So at least at least for for the second game. Yeah, the it writing is pretty good. well, yeah. Yeah, the writing is the writing is pretty good. I mean I'll you know, as 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 good as it can get, because you got like the fucking darkness and all that shit. Yeah. Like you you got goofy over here and all that stuff. But I remember as a kid playing uh Playing through Kingdom Hearts 2, and I really enjoyed all the worlds they put in it. Like, you can go to Tron's world, you can get uh, uh, two swords and stuff like that. Like, that was pretty wild. Like, Keyblade, the mm-hmm. Keyblade. Very iconic weapon. Very an iconic. iconic weapon. Like, everyone knows what a Keyblade is at this yes. point. It's true. Uh, and uh, this game. Allowed you to like uh, have different mo different forms and all that stuff, and they had, there was a secret form at the time that yep. nobody knew about unless you like played the game that that much, where it was like ult like ult- I think it was ultimate form or final form, and I remember people telling me about final form, and I was like, what are you talking about? And then they're like, oh dude, you gotta do this and gotta do that, <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. They, like there was just these little things where it's like, whoa, that's crazy. Like there was a lot of that. And the, uh, it was just, I don't know, I don't, I, maybe it's the nostalgia. Uh, I don't think me. so. I, I think it's a pretty, like, um, well-loved game by a lot of people. And, yeah. You know, which which kind of made me makes me think now, like, I'm surprised there wasn't any Kingdom Hearts games in, on IGN's list. Yeah, there yeah. wasn't actually, now that I think about it. Huh. But uh, uh, to be honest, I don't remember the ending of Kingdom Hearts two. That yeah. no, I do, I do actually, I do. I remember you do all this stuff, and then you guys go back to your island, and then the next adventure. Uh, oh, you get. Oh yeah, I remember. You get like a, a you get a, a note in a bottle from Mickey Mouse, and <laughs> they're reading it. And then they just start running off into the distance, like something's going on. And then yeah. that's where you, we got left off for like three, 13 years. Jesus. We're just like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is. All right, cool. Yeah. So, so that's your number. Wait, what did you say it was? That was my number four. F- my number four. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. My number four is Hades. Super Giants. Oh, Hades. Okay. Um, okay. I said that it was between. Risk of Rain 2 and a game, and it was Hades for my number four spot. Wow. Um, Yes. I think that both games are incredible examples of the roguelike genre. I just think that Hades has a little bit more to it Mm -hmm. um, than Risk of Rain 2 does. Um, The gameplay in Hades is extremely solid and crisp. The art direction is fucking incredible. I love it so much. Um, The music is really good. And the characters and story is what set this game apart from everything else. <laughs> yeah. Um, just the narrative that you follow, the character is Agrius. He's so, like, funny and charming and just interesting. And um, what I think is what's most impressive is, like, I've put in probably, like, 50 to 60 hours collectively in this game. And I have yet to hear a single piece of repeated dialogue from any of the characters. And it's a game where you're constantly know, doing wow. runs. Yeah. Jesus. There is so much dialogue and character to this game. It's fucking crazy. That is um, pretty nuts. Yeah. Every run does feel truly different with the power-ups that you get. And, you know, there's just so many different ways to mix things up. It's just, like, in my opinion, just, like, the best roguelike. Um, but Risk of Rain 2 is really damn close. <laughs> well, <clears throat> Damn. It I really haven't played Hades yet. Yeah, I have to try out Hades. I gotta try it one of these days. You know, but I had to choose between one and I don't know, man. 
Hades seemed to just win out just slightly. All right. Um, I'll take your word for it. I got to try it one of these days. Yeah, I think you'd enjoy it. Nice. Hades. Hades. He's actually in Kingdom Hearts 2, by the way. What? Yeah, yeah, he is. The Disney version. Yeah. The best one. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was actually a pretty big part in the second one. Anyways. Okay, so number three. I should have probably talked about it earlier because you mentioned it earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, <laughs> it's Minecraft. <laughs> oh, you have Minecraft at number three, huh? Yeah, I wow, got it at number crazy. three. Okay. And uh, reason why is because <laughs> it's a pick up and drop game. You can play it anytime. Yes. yes. Anytime. And uh, when uh, there is just so much memories from Minecraft mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. Where I was like, like this game was so fucking fun, and I played the shit out of it. I don't know how many <laughs> hours I had yeah. in it, but I played a lot, a lot, and yeah. obviously your replayability is like, I guess as long as you get bored. Yeah, um, pretty much. But uh, yeah, it was it was just like you know spending years playing it with with friends. I, I know you and I used to play it too. Like. Yes. I spent years playing this game, and I still play it now. Like, yeah. I've been playing it recently. And it's just, like, you know, doing pretty much anything you want in that game is just awesome. It was actually, uh, I, I well, it, it'll come up in my honorables, but, yeah, Minecraft was just one of those games where, like, I came home after school or whatever, and mm-hmm. then I'm just like, I'm going to shit down and play Minecraft. Yep, you I know? remember that, too. It was just so fucking fun, and people would be like well aren't you bored of just like breaking blocks all day like no 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 actually Actually, i'm not you know one more block (laughs) just one more block you know yeah um and just so many good memories and so many fun things that we used to do like i remember uh playing with your with your brother and he became like the the sage of the (laughs) the swamp or whatever yeah i remember that he fucking like he we would always play like And he would just go off and do his own thing, my brother. And I remember one time he we we settled in like the swamp area and my brother built the house like on the water and he built a bridge to it. And he goes, I think he was just like, Paul, come hither, you know? Yeah. (laughs) And we turn around and we see the structure on the water and we walk in. He goes, I am the old sage. (laughs) <laughs> he, he changed his skin laughing. yeah he like he, changed his skin and everything yeah, else yeah, so he, funny. Was, he was like an old man and shit like before i think he was like john lennon <laughs> was his skin yeah and then I he think changed so. it to an old ass man oh it was so funny yeah we just used to do <clears throat> stupid shit like that and it, it was just so fun yeah and, but um do you, do yeah, you have like comfort memories from minecraft just in general like do you know what like do you have that like just I remember doing this and just being like ah just getting like comfortable with it? Yeah. Um okay, I have that too, but like I vaguely I have all these memories of coming home from school, right? And like uh-huh. getting food for my mom and just sitting down at my desk and playing Minecraft while watching Minecraft Let's Plays. Uh-huh. Like that's just such a comfort memory well, to me. That's that's what I was going to say too, like Minecraft wasn't it didn't just stop at the game. Like after yeah. I would finish with the game, I'd be like, "Okay, I'm gonna watch some of my favorite YouTube Minecraft players," yep. Yep. and I would just watch more Minecraft. Like I was spending <laughs> all day on Minecraft, and it was just like I never got enough. Yeah, um, I never got enough. And uh, I think, yeah, that that's where I saw some of my favorite YouTubers. Some of the first fa- so, some of the first YouTubers that I was like. Oh, I'm gonna watch this guy all yep. the, all the time. I'm gonna subscribe you know? and you know. like I used to watch the creatures and uh, <clears throat> fucking Uber rip. Hacks and Roma. <laughs> yeah, rip and stuff. Uh, you know, like I used to watch all these old YouTubers, and I thought Minecraft was like such a good game. Yep, very comforting. Uh, so that that was one of mine too. I, I would just come home, play Minecraft, watch them play Minecraft, and yep. it was a good time. Uh, Halo Three was actually one of those comforts too. Just going in and playing Forge, like that was yeah. Fun. Yeah. Um, my number three is Bloodborne. Um, oh, three, huh? Yes. Okay. That's, number three. that's not my number one. See, I guessed it. <laughs> ah! How'd you know? I guessed it correctly. Because you're a fucking simp for this game, bro. I love this fucking game, dude. Yes. Love it. <laughs> I have tons of hours in it. 
Yeah. Um, it's ahead. from software's best by far. Like, oh yeah, they've always been super good at like nailing certain visual styles with their games. Like, you know, for Dark Souls, they'd had like a whole dark kind of gothic Roman architecture. For Sekiro, they had a feudal Japan kind of look, and for Bloodborne, they went Lovecraft, and it was just fucking yeah. perfect Love, they nailed Lovecraft it victorian it was so yeah. fucking good the the music the creature design was so incredible the gameplay was just on point and like mm-hmm. this is when they nailed like their story and lore with yep. bloodborne too like yep. oh, just such a masterfully done game yeah dude i used to listen to like see so, so i was it was between bloodborne or dark souls for me same here and i uh I had to put Bloodborne because it was just Bloodborne is my favorite of the Soulsborne games. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I gotta put this up. Yes. Uh, I think uh, both games do a really good job with like being a fun, tough game to play. Yeah. And there's really no story until you like delve into it yourself. Yeah. And like that's what I love about these games because they're so it's so rich with like lore that you don't see. Or yeah, you, I mean, rather you see it all the time, but you don't like notice. You're like surrounded by it. It's only when you start to pay attention and stuff do you see like the deeper story behind it. Yeah, and I, I love the uh, <laughs> lore behind like just about every enemy and all. Like, it's oh, it's so good, especially yeah. in Bloodborne. There's so, it's because it has that like la- that uh, Lovecraftian vibe to it. Uh, some of the bosses have that Lovecraftian vibe too so like yes. the, their lore is pretty like wild yeah and uh, I just I love it I love it and the, and the DLC was good too yeah the, the old, the old really ones fucking the good. old yeah, yeah yeah the old ones so um, fucking great and like even even just like the ending itself is good too like I know the Dark Souls has like the flame and all that you know yeah the three different the first endings. flame the yeah. final flame all that but Blood- Bloodborne is literally like, oh yeah, you're you're now one of the old ones. You know, yeah. you're you've become. Well, there's one also of different the endings. Gods, yeah. There's also different yeah. endings, but like that's, I think that's probably the canon one. Mm, I think. Okay, got you. I'm not sure. I don't know. You become a baby god. <laughs> yeah, you become a little squid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, little. Yeah. So it was just and just just the gameplay is so good. Too. Yeah. Oh man! I, I will always have very fond memories of fighting Garman for the first time. Garman, oh god, so fucking good. <laughs> yeah, the bosses are awesome. Every monster looks really good. The environments are good. The sound yeah. design is good. The gameplay is good. Everything is good. Yes. And I'm a big fan of Lovecraftian stuff. So, like, just mixing Dark Souls, one of my favorite like series of all time with yeah, lovecraft with like lovecraft. I, it's just a win-win match made in heaven yeah. yeah match made in heaven for me so i'm like yeah bloodborne is my number one okay i knew it <laughs> <laughs> plus i like the really fast combat i really wish they would bring it back which i think they kind of are with, with uh, Elden ring uh, yeah with Elden ring just a little bit it but looks like really a nice healthy blend yeah, that's what I was going to say. Elden Ring looks like a blend of just about every game they've made so far. So yeah. I'm like, okay. But Bloodborne was the one where it's like, oh, yeah, you're not do- you're not blocking anymore. You're dodging. Like, and you have to be an so aggressive cool. motherfucker. Yeah, and it's so cool. Yeah, Especially yeah. if you have, like, uh, my favorite weapon was the cane, the cane whip. Ooh, the cane whip was so good. So I used to just, like you know dash and whoosh whoosh yeah. whoosh it's so fucking oh it's so fun i know it wasn't the best weapon in the game but it was just so fun and i i loved this was one of my favorite features of the game too you can get drenched in blood yes i love that too just, <laughs> you can just be covered in like sludge and blood yeah and they never brought this feature back to any of the other games i don't yeah, know why no, I, don't know. I, I guess it's because you know blood born so it's like oh you you love the blood right uh, so, maybe but i don't know but they never brought the feature back and but in bloodborne you can get absolutely soaked in in blood yeah it's so cool because yeah. one of my favorite things was i dressed up uh i did a run where i dressed up as an all uh an all white vampire oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> i dressed him up in all white and i made his skin super pale and <laughs> i made him carry uh the the hammer great sword 
Oh, I love the, that shit. Yeah, that was yeah, my you favorite remember the giant, is, so. Yeah, the giant hammer with that can change into a sword. To a sword yeah. So I, I used to make him carry that, and uh, I, I what I like to do is I did a heavy attack and I would hit an enemy and they would splatter blood everywhere and you yeah. just you just see your uh, white outfit turn red and it's so cool, <laughs> so cool. Not yeah. not only that, I think I honestly thought that Bloodborne had like the best costume design in like all the games like it's yes. so so good yeah i agree like every anything you put on just looks fucking cool <laughs> so yeah it's it's fashion souls to the max yeah it, yeah absolutely absolutely but so yes i'm a big simp for <clears throat> bloodborne yes it's a great 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 game yeah i'm a big simp all i right. used to just listen to the lore to go to bed oh so. fucking vati vidya uh huh. King yeah. of Dark Soul, Soulsborne lore's videos, lore videos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I used to um, just listen to that stuff. Yeah. All right. So my number two, um, and this might shock you, Paul. Oh no. Is Warcraft three? What? That's Why? my number two game of all time. Really? Warcraft. 3. Warcraft three, not yes. Starcraft two. I thought you loved Starcraft two. No, but I thought you. But if you've noticed, Paul, The Last of Us is not in my top ten. Oh yeah, it's true. It <laughs> hasn't been in mine either. Yeah. Um but anyways, Warcraft 3 to me is a very very special game to me. I like StarCraft Brood War is probably a better game mechanically, but mm. um for me it's the first game, it's the game that introduced me to RTS, one of my favorite genres. Uh-huh. Strategy oh, games, one of my favorite genres. Fantasy, yeah. the fantasy setting. Jesus. And it was the it was the first game to get me interested in filmmaking. Oh. Yes. This really? this was the game that made me want to become that one made me want to make cool things. Um, That's pretty like lit. seeing the cinematics and I used to make videos in Warcraft 3 like where I would make the heroes like talk to each other and stuff like oh really yeah dude That's if I cool. could go back in time and just like convince myself not to delete this shit I would love that but it's lost forever unfortunately oh, dude that's actually ah it's yeah the, the more we talk the more I think about Halo and, and it's like amazing internet experience uh-huh. yeah cause <clears throat> like you talking about making videos in like in Warcraft 3, I would think back of all the Halo uh, music videos that I used to watch. Yes, Halo and music the, video hell. Yeah, and all that oh, stuff. And yeah. oh, so yeah, anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. But um, yeah, like I just have so many fond memories of doing that. Um, like the hero gameplay really changed a whole lot. It fucking revolutionized MOBAs. <coughs> um, and, oh, yeah. Like it was just every. <sighs> Every day after school, I would just, like, play, like, three or four matches. But, like, I would just play against computers. Like, I wouldn't play online. But I just mm-hmm. loved it because it was so immersive. Like, I love playing as the orcs and, like, the humans and night elves. And just, like, I would love just fucking around with the game, especially on the map editor. I made mm-hmm. so many maps for me and my oldest brother to play on. And a lot of them yeah, sucked. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it was still a lot of fun. <clears throat> oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Damn, Warcraft 3, huh? I didn't play that, but I did play StarCraft 2, and StarCraft 2 is amazing. Yes. Yes. Ah, uh, though I do prefer Brood War. Yeah. Jesus. So. That's cool. I think I jumped the ball. I said my number two before you said yours. <laughs> did you? Yeah, because we were talking about Bloodborne, and I just jumped right to my number two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's fine because yeah. we know what your number one is now. So. Yeah, and you, we know yours too. And so, what's yeah, your number two? My number two is Escape from Tarkov. Ooh, holy shit! I, this high yeah, up? yeah, I, I rate it really high up because <laughs> it is probably the most realistic game I've ever played. Yeah, I, it's fucking crazy. It's lovely. Yeah, it's if you want a shooter where you will be like. Ad- pumping adrenaline pretty often i think escape from tarkov is a it's mm-hmm. so fun it, it, it's so fun i've already pumped like ha- hundreds of hours in this thing it's it's and, really fun when you can get into a game right yeah that too <laughs> <laughs> as long as you can get into a game um but but it's real it, it really is just uh 
probably the most like realistic game I've ever played. Like I I've, yeah. I've played some pretty realistic <laughs> games, but nothing has like compared to this. No, it's fucking crazy. It's actually bonkers how like realistic this game is. Like yeah. You can you can break a, a your arm, your leg, you can get like head tremors, you can do all this stuff happen to you. Yeah, and you, um, there's like the thing that I noticed about that game is like to replenish your stamina, you have to stop moving like and like crouch. Yeah, you have to actually cover. take breaks. <clears throat> um, you have to eat food, drink water, yep. do that, do this. Like, there's a lot to it, and um, it's not just like a shooter. It's a it's a looter shooter, so you have to run around and yeah find loot and escape with the loot. And that's yeah. the hard part, because, like, you can just get one-tapped by, like, just about anyone. Yeah. Like, it's it's a pretty damn fucking good game, and I really have a good time playing it. Uh, probably my favorite shooter okay. of all time at this point. Yeah. I play it a lot. Well, when I can. <laughs> <laughs> Every but. time I've tried to turn into Paul's stream when he's playing it, it doesn't work and he can't get in. I'm, be- I'm beginning to believe I'm cursed. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> so, it's it's really just like it really shown. It's it's really put the spotlight on like how real a, a game can get. Yeah, seriously. Because it's just absolutely bonkers. Because like, I don't look. I don't really know what what else like someone can can do to make a game like this realistic. And like, it what's looks next? incredible too. Like it looks very real. Yeah, it looks like yeah. It looks the the environments are great. The sound design's great. The gameplay is great. And it's just like uh, you don't even have to be in a gunfight for it to be tense. Like you can just be surround in an area and you're just searching it, looking for people. Because there's no like radar for you can see yeah. you can see people. There's nothing of that. So you're just like you're wandering into an area and you don't know fucking anything about that area. Of who's in it, yep. who's been there, nothing. Yep. You can find little clues, like if you see things have been raided, you're like, oh, okay, like someone's been here, but yeah. like you don't know where they went and stuff like that. So yeah. it's just like you got to be on your toes all the time. And then if you if you hear a shot, like it, it might be too late. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just like it's one of those games too, where like a piece of advice for it is like try to avoid fighting as much as possible. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, I I will be the first to say that I've been a bitch before and just like hid in the bush or something to see someone like pass by, and even then like I still could die from them turning around. Yeah, because they hear me in the bush. Definitely. Like that. Like, and it's and like I said, the realism factor is there too because not not only is it like realistic in terms of like gameplay, but it's also realistic in terms of how. Uh, how like autistic you can get with your guns <laughs> like you, you can go nuts like you, you yeah. can build a gun from scratch and you can add stupid attachments to that gun mm-hmm. and uh yeah there's really memey stuff out there where it's like obviously it wouldn't exist in real life but it's just like yeah. most of most of the things in this game is like whoa no way like like if you if you wear sunglasses and someone gets a headshot on you but they shot your glasses. Depending on what sort of gla- like sunglasses you're wearing, the tilt on the sunglasses will deflect the bullet, and you'll live. <laughs> what the like, fuck? <laughs> yeah, and the, like it's it's that crazy where I'm just like, holy shit! Like this game's insane. That is pretty crazy. And like they they add to the game all the time. Yeah. So who knows where the game changing. will be next time? Like but when this game first came out, it was not like this. Yeah. And now it's like, it's gone so real, or it's it's insane. If they ever add like a VR mode to this, like oh, holy oh, shit, that'd be crazy. <clears throat> yeah. So, it's just one of my favorite shooters would, of all time. I would. Um, this game is actually one that I'm very very curious about, but I'm too intimidated to get started. Um, <laughs> it's I must yeah, just. It, mm-hmm. it it is definitely a very intimidating game. Yeah, I mostly and, just watch Shroud play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's that's like another thing. Like you see these pro players playing, and even they struggle with the game. Yeah, definitely. So it's like what you know, it's a rough game when even the pros are having a hard time. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, it's fucking it's great. Like it's fun to watch too. It's really just a really yeah. entertaining game. 
yeah, it's a really damn fun game and probably one of the best shooters of all time, yeah, in yeah. my opinion. So, all right. right now, as it stands, it is my number two. Cool. All right, so we both know our number ones. So mine was Fallout New Vegas. Yours was Bloodborne. But mm-hmm. um, seeing as how this list was very, very difficult for us to make, there had to be some that had to be cut. Um, oh, yeah. So this is kind of our rapid fire honorable mention. So you go first, Paul. You name all your honorable mentions, then I'll all of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, these have no order, so I'm just gonna say them. Mm-hmm. Um, Silent Hill Two, okay. probably one of my favorite horror games of all time. One of the best horror games ever made. Yeah. Uh, RuneScape. It got me Ooh, into MMOs. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> RuneScape got me into MMOs. I had to put it on here, and I still watch RuneScape content Me to too. this day whenever whenever it's, critical it's streams just, it, i watch it it's so funny um okay so the last of us is on here okay i don't know if you have it it's on also there, but my I, honorable mentions yes i i put it in my honorable mentions uh because i don't i think the game is really uh the story is amazing and the, the visuals are amazing and the sound design is amazing everything about the game is pretty much amazing mm-hmm. uh However, I don't think there's any replayability to it. No, none whatsoever. And I also, I also didn't really like what the game did to the industry. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> okay. Because now you have a bunch of games trying to be like the next game awards game, you know? Yeah. So I'm just like, eh. All right. Whatever. Fair enough. So that's that. And then I have Resident Evil Two Remake. Okay. Probably, uh, uh, I I put it on here because I was. It, it really shows the capability of being able to remake a game properly. Yes. yes. So like those those shitty remakes. That's really what they are. They're just shitty remakes because mm-hmm. this game has really shown that if you fucking spend the time, you can make a damn good remake. It's true if you give a shit. Yep. Yeah, and then Super Mario World. It's on my honor rolls. Okay, nice. Because it is my... It's not that it's like a, an amazing game or anything like that. Like, it's a fun game and it's it's real, it's real replayability is like okay-ish. I mean, it's mm. for the gaming like enthusiast, I guess, if you're a yeah. Mario fan. Yeah. But the reason why I put it on here is because it's my it's the first game that I've ever played. Okay. So Yeah. I also I, have I, Super Mario World on my list. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> and then... Uh, following that, have uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Great game. That's, Classic. That's my favorite Metroidvania. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's the one that got me into RPGs in the first place. Yes, it's a very good RPG. Yep. Uh, then I have Little Big Planet. Ooh, that's, that's an out there one. <laughs> I fucking love the Little Big Planet. Yes. I, I, couldn't put, mm-hmm. I couldn't put it on my top ten because it's like... For all intents and purposes, it's not like an amazing game or anything. Like it was really cool at the time, um, but the reason why I have it on here is because I was, it's like filled with nostalgia for me. It had an amazing online community too. Yeah, it's it's filled with nostalgia. I used to yes. play. It's it's one of those comfy games. The uh, comfort memories. I remember. Yep. Uh, my friends coming over and and we would just play Little Big Planet. And we would just like smack each other and, and place pipes around, on each other and yeah. stuff. Yeah, it yeah. was just a good time. Uh, then I also have RDR two on here, Red Dead Red Redemption two okay. on my honorables. Cool. Um, really good game. We already talked about it. Yeah. Let's see. Then I got Modern Warfare two. Okay, nice. I Classic. played that shit. Yeah, played it a lot. Probably one of the best shooters of all time. That was the height of my Call of Duty career. Was playing that game. Yeah, yeah. We stopped after Good that. Good stuff. Well, I I continued, but that's one of my <laughs> favorites. Uh, then my last honorable is uh, Super Smash Melee. Ooh, Melee. that's a good honorable one. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I spent years playing that game, and I still play now. Yeah, nice. When when my friends want to. Cool, so. cool. I still I still do too, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm always down for a game of Smash. <clears throat> mm-hmm. All right, so my honorable mentions are, in no particular order, is Breath of the Wild. Um, okay. It's a great, it's an amazing game. It's a really great reason to pick up a Switch. I think that the story and the weapon durability really holds it back, but, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, Last of Us, we already talked about. 
Stardew Valley is on there. Oh, um, I fucking yeah. love this game. This is like the ultimate comfort game that's to like, me. That's a damn good game. Um, the only thing I don't really like is like the pixel art style. I think it's like not a great looking game, but whatever. Okay. Graphics, the graphics aren't everything. It is um, what it is. It is what it is. Um, Risk of Rain Two. Uh, like I said, Ew. it was it was between that and Hades for my number four. So this game just unfortunately did not make the cut, but it's still a masterpiece. Um, <clears throat> up next, I have StarCraft Brood War. It was between... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just fucking wah, pinnacle of RTS gaming. <laughs> it's so good. Um, after that, I have XCOM Enemy Unknown. It was... Okay. I have very, very fond memories of you and your brother coming over to our house to play it. <laughs> and we would do... Um, like where we would make our characters and we would control them in the fight. So we would, I would move my guy, then I would pan the control over to Paul. He would move his guy, in general. And there's there's just so many great stories that came from that. Dude, um, it's so fun. Remember my sniper? <laughs> yeah, your sniper. Okay, so real quick, so Paul had this sniper, right? And in the game, we were all related to like a squad of brothers. Um, yeah. And Paul had a sniper that just got fucking super leveled up. Like he was so strong. And we were kind of exploring a subway and, um, like, the underground place, not the restaurant. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, Paul was like, oh, I'm going to climb on top of a train car to get a better vantage point. So he did, and he immediately got fucking murked <laughs> by, <laughs> by, by aliens because they, like, they pop out. Like, you can explore the fog of war in the darkness, but if you venture too far, they can come at you. Um, <clears throat> so Paul got killed almost immediately in that fight and Paul's brother yeah. was like no like brother and his character killed all of the aliens in that encounter like as an act of revenge <laughs> yeah it was, it was so cool yeah it was like a really cool storyline that just happened dynamically in the game um, yeah. so yeah XCOM has a very special place in my heart for that reason XCOM 2 is very good but it doesn't have that same sentimental value to me um, mm-hmm. and up next is Link to the Past, my favorite Zelda game. Um, I almost put it on my top ten, but yeah, there was a couple of games that, that I liked a little bit more. Um, okay. And lastly, like we mentioned before, Super Mario World, the king of 2D platformers. Mm. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. I think I want to put uh, Total War Warhammer on here, too. I was really debating putting that on there. I just don't have enough. Like, I haven't played it enough. <laughs> I I should have put it on there on my honorables. So I'm adding it now because I've played like over 300 hours in it, <laughs> and it's it's uh, I, and that's that's only with one campaign, by the way. <laughs> so it's like that tells you a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, one if, game, 300 hours. The the and, thing that I love about Total War compared to other like civilization games i guess or like strategy games is um yeah the combat like the warfare in those games is fucking insane dude like yeah, you can fun. have these massive scale battles and like properly plan out your front lines and like your flanks and stuff and there's such immaculate detail that when you zoom in you could see individual npcs having fights happening. yeah it's yeah. crazy and, yeah, one of my favorites. And Warhammer just adds a new element with like magic and like all yes. this stuff. Like it's so great. Yes, um, I'm looking forward to Warhammer Three. Yeah, I actually I'm playing Warhammer Two right now. Oh yeah, I caved in and I, got, and I got it. Um, <clears throat> nice. Currently in the middle of a of an orc campaign. Um, okay. Okay. But yeah, it's incredibly fun. <clears throat> you fucking garbage. Wah! Wah! <laughs> Good luck with the dwarves. I fucking hate the dwarves. Thanks, man. I always play as the dwarves. It's I'm, easy, I'm playing. I've, the uh, the single game with 300 hours is a Skaven campaign. Oh God! We are the rats. The rats. We are that? the rats. You have to uh, like. We have to have like a therapy sit down with you. You really like being rats in fantasy settings. It's fun. <laughs> I okay so. I think a big deal of, like, why I picked rats in, like, fantasy settings is because they're always seen as, like, the, these, like, fucking, like, sly, dirty bastards. Yeah, that's what they are. And I love that shit. Because <laughs> I, uh, as you know, w- like, when I play role-playing games and stuff, I-, I tend to, like, doing stealth 
Yep. <clears throat> and I like playing as like assassins and stuff like that. So when I think like of the perfect assassin, I think of like rats. A rat. Yep. <clears throat> that makes sense. So that's why I, I always play them. Yeah. I, I love them. <laughs> well, Plus it, it makes for uh, it makes for uh, some fun encounters when yes, you're a rat. I agree. So. Well, love um, them. I'm happy that you put. Total War Warhammer on here. I wanted to, but I'm like, I haven't played it enough yet. <laughs> yeah, no, I have, and I can definitely say it's yeah. it's it's a top 100 game. Like, it's so good. Yeah. Um, Pro- I hope Warhammer 3 will be better, but we'll see. That's the last one, too, that they're making. Yep, yeah. yep. Oh, that's actually a big thing about Warhammer 2. It's like, if you have the first game, you get uh, to play all of the characters between the two games in yes. one giant giant map yeah so and they're they're actually importing that feature into the third game so if you have both of the games then you're gonna have a ginormous (laughs) map and and like i've said Noah, my campaign right now as skaven is like 300 hours (laughs) with two games worth of content oh my god so imagine three games worth of content that campaign will never end (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> You'll be there the rest of your fucking life. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that's our top ten list. Um, once again, this is entirely subjective. We're not trying to claim yes. this is any official list no. of any kind. This is um, my favorites right yes, now. Yes, our favorites. Could change just, next year. Just like our movies, the the mm-hmm. list we made with movies, these are our favorites. Yep. Um, but um, feel free to let us know in the comment section if you guys have what are your favorites, if... Yeah. You disagree with any of the placings in our list, or if you feel like oh, Breath of the Wild should have been number one, just go ahead and just uninstall your entire computer and throw it away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but in all seriousness, thanks so much for listening to this episode of The Crusty Couch, and we will see you guys. Well, oh, hold on. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of The Crusty Couch. Be sure to look for us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, TikTok, just Follow Wee. us everywhere. Um, Wee, we're on we Pornhub all, now. We all over the place. <laughs> yeah, we're on Pornhub. Just look up a uh, thick Latina gets clapped. Uh, <laughs> you'll find it after a couple uh, hours. The thumb, the thumbnail is uh, Noah's face. And yeah. Other stuff. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> other stuff that's not very savory. But um, th- <laughs> thanks again for listening, and we will see you guys next week for another episode of the Crusty Couch. <laughs>